Hey, food friends, and welcome to the Food Founders Podcast, your number one spot to get mentoring, guidance, and behind the scene learnings to help you understand what it really takes to launch, grow, and scale your packaged food or beverage business. On the show, you'll hear from food founders at various stages of growth, and you'll hear from me and my 14 years of packaged food and beverage experience. Each episode is packed with insights, inspiration, and learning to help you on your food business journey. I'm your host, Ainsley, and this is the Food Founders Podcast. Before we jump into today's show, I want to thank our sponsor, the Food Brands That Sell program. Food Brands That Sell is a six-week deep dive into the CPG industry and teaches you how to win within that industry by creating a brand that you, retailers, and consumers love. Here's what a recent alumni had to say about the program. I am so grateful that I chose to do Food Brands That Sell. I learned so much about myself, my journey, and my company. These six weeks changed how I'm doing my business, and I can see the difference already. I no longer feel alone. If you aren't already on the waitlist, hop on over to foodbrandsthatsellwaitlist.com or grab the link below to make sure that you are first to know when the program is accepting new students. All right, let's dive into today's episode. Hey, food friends, and welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Today, I'm really excited to have on the show one of the co-founders of Big Mountain Foods, Jasmine Byrne. Jasmine, welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be on your show. Jasmine, you and everything that you're doing over at Big Mountain Foods have been getting a lot of traction and you're making a lot of noise in the CPG space right now. Um, can you can you kick it off by just introducing everyone to Big Mountain Foods, who you guys are and what you sell? Yes, of course. So Big Mountain Foods is a plant-based food company um, and we manufacture all of our own products in Delta, BC, Canada. So we're super proud, Canada, Canadian brand. And our plant is allergen free. So we don't use any soy, wheat, nuts, oil, like coconut oil and that sort of thing. So really proud to be allergen free. And that's about it. What, I mean, what got you to start this in the like capacity that you have being completely um, allergen free? That's obviously a really big it's a really big undertaking, as I don't need to tell you. Um, but what got you? What got you to start this? So originally, actually, we so we started with a original veggie patty, and that was back in the eighties, and it did have some allergens in it. And when I started with Big Mountain seven years ago, now I actually at the same time was diagnosed with celiac disease. So that really kind of was a hard transition. No, the mainstream didn't really know about celiac then and um, major allergens weren't really a thing yet as much as they're talked about now. Whereas, you know, now people are actually calling it on their packaging. It wasn't as easy to find even seven years ago. So we started developing products and we had launched um, our collie crumble that actually had walnuts in it. And we started doing demos and then we realized that some moms would come up and was doing the sampling and would say, oh, well, my, I would love to put this in my child's lunch, but I can't because of the nut allergies going into schools. And then we, a, kind of, a light bulb kind of went off and we said, oh, geez, well, why, why not get rid of allergens? So we're family friendly and um, friendly for that person at the dinner table that might have an allergen. So then we just decided to do a company mandate, no allergens. And, and then we started to go from there, exploring all different types of ingredients, but also trying to stay innovative and cutting edge. So it, it, it definitely is a challenge, especially in plant-based when you don't use gluten or soy, that's for sure. Absolutely a challenge, but 100% worth it. And I know yeah. people are looking for this like so much and you experience this yourself when you recognize that you were diagnosed with celiac and just not having those options and mm -hmm. not being able to sit around the dinner table with everyone else and like just feel that everything is you know everyone we can all enjoy something delicious together it's challenging for people 
Oh, for sure. Especially being, if you're vegan or vegetarian, like it's the sets are getting better now in retailers, but previously like where you'd find soy tofu and whatnot, there, there wouldn't be anything that didn't contain wheat or soy. The whole category was, was that. So if you were vegan or vegetarian, try, and then you also had an allergen to soy or wheat, you'd be in big trouble. It's pretty much making everything from scratch. Right. So really just, try, yeah, they're trying to be that, that source of protein for people that, that can't enjoy some of the allergens out there anymore. Right. Right. And now you had mentioned that the company has been around since the 80s. Talk to me mm-hmm. about what it's looked like over this time span. I'm, I'm sure there's been lots of changes and change and things along the road, but like, had you guys always planned to have it here? And I know you've been on board for the past seven years, but was this always the vision where you guys are right now? Well, you know, I'll tell you back in the eighties. So my mom founded Big Mountain Foods and it really started as actually a really trendy vegetarian cafe in Kitsilano, which is a really cool beach community here in Vancouver. And she was really cutting edge. Now, fast forward to 2021, there's lots of cafes like that. But back then there wasn't. Um, So she was really restaurant focused. And she would also get really involved in concerts. Like she did Lollapalooza here and all sorts of cool, awesome concerts. And then would she be a vendor there? And from there, she actually had a buyer from Safeway come into her cafe and that buyer would sit and eat every day and enjoyed her veggie burger. And he just said to her, why are you making your life so difficult? Why don't you package this veggie burger? Um, Give it a shelf life. And then you don't have to be, you know, slaving away in your um, restaurant all day long. You can actually sell a product that when you're not working, you're still, you know, making money and we can plan ahead and whatnot instead of make to order all the time. And so then she really started to explore the wholesale and retail avenue. And then that kind of helped her pivot into going away from the restaurant industry and more into wholesale. She kind of continued on um, just selling her one veggie burger around Vancouver to places like Whole Foods Choices, the the smaller independent markets for a number of years because she was raising three children at the same time. And I got involved after I graduated university and um, really saw an opportunity in plant-based. This was right before Beyond Meat came out. So we were just kind of right on the brink of when the trend was starting. There was still a lot of people when I started so seven years ago, definitely didn't believe in us. They were they thought we were crazy thinking of scaling up a veggie burger company. <laughs> They're like, why would you do this? We kind of had this vision. The two of us um, then became a team. And my mom felt, you know, more empowered. Now she has a team member on the same page as her. And then we'd start to do, you know, networking events in and around the city. Then we started to travel to trade shows and just through the power of networking, it just kind of blossomed. Like we would get a presentation at a retailer and no one was saying no to our products. And then we won product of the year with the Collie Crumble. So we just kind of gained this momentum that you, it was hard to slow down when, and hard to look the other way when everyone's saying, yes, yes, we'll take your product. You're right on trend, woman owned, family, all that stuff. So it really, we had so much support from, I guess, the industry and retailers to keep going as, as, as well as the government really, really helped back our vision. So I definitely didn't expect to be sitting in a 70,000 square foot facility. I, I definitely didn't think we would be at this capacity. But I'm so happy and glad we we kept moving and plugging away to get here. That's for sure. And now you're going going to be able to go back to anyone who's like, "What are you doing, yeah. plant based <laughs> burger?" And you're like, "Yeah, that's right." <laughs> Look how far well, it's come. Can, yeah, and now we're so much more than that. We're actually right now. I was just doing a walkthrough of our plant because construction starts next week. Multi multi million dollar production is go or construction is going underway to implement the first 
to my knowledge, ever a large scale tofu alternative plant, soy tofu alternative, I should say. So we're developing um, a chickpea tofu and a smoked chickpea tofu. And the capacity is going to be huge on this equipment. So we're really excited for that. So the 70,000 square feet doesn't seem too big anymore. (laughs) The volume, the amount of equipment that's coming in. (laughs) That's awesome. Just see how it's grown. And it's got to be really wonderful to be able to work um, together as a family on this. Mm -hmm. I'm sure your mom is so grateful for you being able to come on board and, you know, see that vision as well with her. Talk to me about what it's like working together as a family on a business like this. You know what? It's, it, I'm sure it's not for everyone, but for us, it's been mostly all positive. Mm. I mean, we were, we're literally like yin and yang. I'm more operations. She's more sales. We both really push ourselves push each other to grow and keep learning. Whereas my, like myself, I, I might be naturally introverted where she's extroverted. So she keeps pushing me to go to these shows, network. And then myself, I'm, I'm pushing her to, you know, look at forecasting and planning and all the more operation stuff. So we work really well together and I feel like I can take her entrepreneurial visions and put them into reality. And it's, it's so nice having each other as family where there's just that trust and bond Mm. as to, as opposed to partnering with um, someone else or outsiders. And we've been really, really lucky that we haven't had to take on any investors as of now, which I think has also helped keep our relationship really positive Mm. because it's just us two making the decisions as opposed to, um, you know, having other outsiders um, trying to control your business because they might have equity in it. Right. So overall, it's great. I love it. We It's funny because I went to um, like an energy reader type person um, a few months ago just to kind of talk and hash out what the future might look like and where we're going with Big Mountain Foods. And the, the lady that I was speaking with said that my mom and I actually, in our past life, we were a married couple. So it's oh funny. That, <laughs> it's funny that maybe that's why we work so well together. <laughs> yeah, you guys clearly work very well together. And yeah, all very connected. Like fans, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> we're super I mean, connected. We actually even live next to each other now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's how obsessed we are with Big Mountain Foods. <laughs> We just live, breathe, and uh, eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's the key. You know, you need you need to be like all in with a company like yeah. this. You can't be half in with CPG and expect no. it to to really grow. And you guys have absolutely embraced that. You you literally have to become obsessed, and yeah. you have to swallow your pride and just keep going and going. But yeah, especially now, even since I've gotten into CPG, the categories are getting so tight and there's so much innovation and startups coming out. Um, it'll be very interesting to see what happens in the, even the next 10 years. I just, I think that this has probably been the most competition in all categories ever yeah. existent. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's getting more and more competitive and it does yes. sort of become this, it becomes more and more difficult to get that shelf space if you oh, yeah. are not already in store. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you guys have a leg up on that right now. You're in Loblaw, you're in Walmart, you're in Meyer. You have some of that, that placement already, which is great for you. Yeah, we're lucky, but it, it, but now it's keeping the listings, right? Mm-hmm. Staying innovative. Like you, you definitely can't go flat. So we're always, you know, continuously, improving, whether it's discussing things like a yeast extract or a natural flavor off the label, or what's the new hottest mushroom that you can incorporate into your products. And then the the whole marketing piece that we're just now diving into, we've always been so operational focused and sales focused and never really focused on marketing. And now, especially since COVID, there has to be a huge focus on digital marketing. And the biggest challenge comes getting retailers to show you what they can offer for marketing, especially these big retailers. 
So marketing is a beast. And I think that's one thing um, that startups and every brand nowadays has to invest so much of the funds into. It's so important. Yeah, absolutely. You can have best tasting product, but if no one knows about it, it's really tough to yeah. get that going, right? Mm-hmm. And, so and also it's so different in the US mm-hmm. compared to Canada even. Like we might have a good following in Canada, but when we went into the US, we're actually finding our best seller, which is the Collie Crumble in Canada, isn't gaining much traction in the US. And it's probably a good guess would be brand recognition and mm-hmm. the US customer not knowing what what is Collie Crumble? What do I do with it? Right. So, Because when did you launch in the US? We launched in the US probably been three years now, but it's been, it's been slow and steady. Now we're gaining some pretty good. We actually just um, launched in Sprouts this month, which is great. And then we um, are launching with HEB next month. So that's awesome. And now we're in talks with like Sam's Club and Costco. So big things ahead come January. I think this, this chickpea tofu is really going to open the doors for not even, not just the U S but, um, we're exploring um, Japan and Europe as well. Mm, very cool. Very cool. I'm yeah. excited to see that. <laughs> um, it's so true though. So many people want that protein, but a lot of people are turned off of soy products. So, mm-hmm. I mean, absolutely fills a need in the market for people. Yeah. And we're not trying to at all knock soy at all, but it just seems like people, they're first of all, tofu sells like it is, it was as hot as toilet paper was when, (laughs) when the pandemic was going on, there was like shortages of tofu everywhere. Um, but then there's also the other side where, especially with men, like they, there's all this stigma around it. Um, and people are nervous. Um, so we're just trying to provide that alternative and it's, and it tastes and functions just like soy which is great because, you know, you always worry that if you're trying to do do an alternative that it might not taste, look, or function the same, Mm -hmm. but it does. So that's awesome. That's what, that was really important to us that it would fry and um, have a very subtle taste like soy tofu. Yeah. That's, that's very important to function like traditional soy. So the the customer still feels like they're getting the same experience. I can't wait to try this. (laughs) By the way. I'll send you some. I'll send you some. Well, (laughs) amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, talk to me about marketing. So you mentioned, okay, so we're gonna we're doing more marketing now. What does that look like for you guys um, in terms of in terms of getting your feet with, with wet with marketing to get more people to know about the product? Well, you know what? Uh, to be transparent, it's tough. There is so many marketing agencies out there now, and everyone has their own, um, you know theory of what works and what doesn't work. And they all come with crazy fees. So we are still like, it's everything still isn't solidified. The amount of interviewing of agencies we've done is crazy as well as we've now hired um, a mini internal team as well, but the bandwidth still isn't there to do everything. So we still need an agency, but it just, it's marketing, especially digital marketing, it's evolving so fast that it's hard to choose what to do. For instance, digital couponing and sampling is becoming very popular right now. So there's different companies offering this. Then they they come with quite big fees. Sorry, I'm hoping you can't hear that construction behind me. We are actually (laughs) renovating the building right now. (laughs) Yeah, no. (laughs) But yeah, so they, we, yeah, the couponing and digital sampling it's interesting. It seems like that's going to be the next thing, especially when you can't actually physically sample product because of COVID and whatnot. And, and trade shows aren't as um, popular right now, but they come with these big fees. And then how do you know um, it's going to work? And they're going to take that coupon and go into the store. Um, and then what's the repurchase going to look like? So that it, it's definitely top of mind right now. And we're researching because it seems to be what all the brokers and sales reps are recommending right now is to get into that space. So that's probably going to be our next um, experimental marketing we're going to try is this digital couponing, digital sampling. Right. Yeah. That online moving to offline is definitely becoming, you know, more and more important and it can definitely help you for sure. But 
it's a beast. It's a beast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's Not so many sampling chicken. groups now. It's like you can sample with mom groups or vegan groups and then, you know, it, it's or just the general public. So it's very interesting, but it's really cool how these online platforms can target your demographic. They can, they can narrow it down to, um, you know, a certain neighborhood that we know the retailers will carry your product. Um, it's super cool and sophisticated. So I'm sure we'll get really good data out of it at the end, which is what, you know, that's one thing the retailers always want to see nowadays is data. Yeah. How are you performing? Even if it's just like showing that you're selling online, like through your e-commerce site and being able to present that to a retailer like Walmart and saying, hey, look, this product is selling this amount online. You can tell that consumers want it. You should list it. So yeah, all the, at least all these digital couponing and stuff, it, it seems like they, they provide you with a lot of data and insight after the program's over, which is pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's definitely definitely helpful for you guys and for that uh, retailer perspective as well. Mm -hmm. And you guys just launched your own e-commerce platform quite recently as well, correct? We are still launching it. Um, It keeps getting delayed because of all these, like, we want this plugin and that plugin. (laughs) Um, And then we're like, well, should we do these subscription boxes? And should we launch just an exclusive product on our e-commerce site? We're actually thinking of making our Kim, Kim, my mom's famous lentil loaf for the holidays and putting that exclusively on our e-commerce sites. We have all these ideas and it's just getting it all on the site and implemented, but we are set to launch um, end of October now. So that's really exciting. It's, it's insane though. Even the logistics around e-commerce drop shipping in the U S is a whole beast as well in itself very easy to ship within Canada, but once you get outside of Canada, you really want to find um, a warehousing partner to work with and those fees can get quite high than picking the orders for you. So just working out all the logistics behind it. Definitely a ton of logistics to figure out in this journey, for sure. And let's be honest, we know there's going to be something new that's going to happen in the future too, where you're going to need to figure it out for a whole new job as well. Yeah. (laughs) constantly evolving. Yeah. You mentioned something before that I'd love to touch on. So you had mentioned that you guys haven't had to take any external funding um, to date. How have you been able to manage such great growth? Uh, You guys are in a lot of stores, you're building your own facility, you've done a lot of it. How have you been able to manage that? And if you were to start over again, would you do the same thing or would you look at taking investors? Well, first we operated out of um, a very small facility, which Kimberly owned, which was the best investment she could have ever done way a long time ago before Vancouver real estate was through the roof. So that helped a lot having a building that was paid off, but it also was very small. So we tried, we, we maximized it with the low overhead as long as we possibly could. And that allowed us to save quite significantly before moving. So that, that was a first step, very low overhead in the old building. And we just worked 24 hour shifts, seven days a week in that plant before even thinking about moving. So that was the first step. And then the second step was, um, we applied for, quite a bit of government grants and support over the past few years um, to get to a good place of being able to move and scale. And then working with our banks that would match the government funding, it really worked out. And then just having strong, strong business plans and projections, forecasting, all of our budgets over the next five years, all of that in line and being able being able to explain it and get everyone on board about our vision really helped the buy-in. So we don't have an external and we don't have external investors, but we do have strong support from the government and our financial institute that have helped us grow. So we can, we definitely can't say it's just, you know, Kimberly and I have <laughs> we've definitely have a lot of great people on our side. Uh, yeah, that makes that makes sense though. And there's so much great funding out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you have to just 
I mean, you got to go and look for it. Right. And then there is, yeah, yeah. You just have to immerse yourself in it. So I, I, I try as, as hard as I can actually in all my spare time <laughs> to help, um, startups and other small brands that I know. And I, I send them all the links and say, I'll help you fill out the applications because it really does help. Like our first funding we ever received was a buy BC program so supporting local. And it was a very small amount of money, but it really did help get out um, our, our first round of orders to, I think it was Save on Foods, another local retailer. Mm-hmm. So it kind of can kickstart your business, right? And and people get overwhelmed in the application process. But once you get going, it, it the next one gets that much easier and you already kind of have your template in place. So if I can say anything, it's apply for those grants. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Especially at those beginning phases, right? Like it helps you be able to scale to get mm. to that next level. You've got real hard costs to get into retail. Yeah. Stores, whether yeah. it's listing fees, product, ingredient, like there's, there's real hard costs, um, mm-hmm. which can make it easier for investors to like, whether it be grants, whether it be banks to get behind. Um, but it's also, you got things to pay for. It's not a software, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's coming up next for you guys? And um, we talked about growing on e We talked about, uh, growing, uh, the new tofu alternative. Um, what else is on the horizon that you guys are focused on? Well, next for Big Mountain Foods, we're actually, um, along with the tofu plant, we are actually becoming a zero waste facility. So some backstory on traditional tofu is there's a large amount of byproduct that's called okara. And traditionally, soy manufacturers, they would um, ship it off and they'd usually use it in like uh, factory farms. So for us, we, you know, are a vegan company, not about, uh, we're all about cruelty free. So we didn't really want to sell off our, our byproduct to factory farms. It didn't make sense to us at all. So we found a way to upcycle and upcycling is, I feel one of the new hottest things that's going to be kind of here to stay. There's a lot of buzz around upcycling right now. So we are, um, right now researching what equipment to bring in and we are going to upcycle all of our byproduct of the tofu, which is called okara and remill it into value added products. So things like we want to launch a gravy or um, cornstarch alternative or an arrowroot starch Mm -hmm. alternative. And it would be chickpea starch um, that you can use in any type of baking Mm -hmm. and then um, doing gluten-free flour blends. So it's really cool what you can do with the byproduct. You just have to further process it. So that's really top of mind right now because literally we'd be, um, though car is like literally thousands and thousands of pounds we're going through a day that would just either be put into the organic bins and the city has to deal with it or um, we'd have to unload it to, to farms basically. Mm-hmm. So we're really excited about that. And then we're actually also exploring too this whole buzz around um, fermentation and alternative proteins. I don't know if you've seen much around um, mycoprotein. No, and how I they're haven't. yeah, it's really cool. There's a lot of startups coming out of the gate from you know San Francisco and stuff, um, but it takes them so long to scale up and get these plants going. So with us, we already have the infrastructure here. So we're thinking of potentially, well, we're exploring micro mycoprotein fermentation, which is really cool. You you can use um, mushroom to ferment. And I th- it's pretty much like brewery equipment, but then you can make this functional protein um, that's just as good as meat, like that same kind of beyond meat texture vibe, but it's made of mushrooms. So really cool. That's Very definitely top cool. of mind for us. I love the innovation that continuously comes out of you guys. In terms <laughs> of, like, like it's so it's so great because you're in a spot, it's like a place in the market where there are so many different areas that can blossom, you know, and you are mm-hmm. going into all these different areas and really creating like multiple lines of products that people can come to and enjoy if they are looking for 
this meat alternative and allergen free alternative type product and feel good about putting into their body and what you're doing with zero waste as well. Like feel good with what they're doing to the environment as well. And that's, yeah. that's not going anywhere. No, no, it's not. Absolutely. Yeah. People are, I'm excited for the future of food in terms of just how conscious everyone is about what we put in our body, what we're doing to our land. And the best way that we can all, you know, make that possible is create a great business the way that Big Mountain Foods has, or we can do it with our dollars and what we decide to buy at the grocery store as well. Yeah, it's true. Lots of work to be done, but I'm really (laughs) excited to be like, I feel like we're so immersed in it that um, I'm I'm really, I'm really proud and excited to be a part of it and not just an outsider looking in. That's for sure. I really hope that if, if we do anything, it's big mountain has made a difference, difference for the the planet, really. That's what Mm -hmm. it all comes down to. Yeah, absolutely. And you being so immersed in nature where you are, uh, I'm sure you're so connected in that. Mm -hmm. Last question for you, for anyone who's just starting out in the packaged food industry or in those very early years, uh, what advice do you have for them? Gosh, if if I can say one thing, it's literally to network, 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 network. And I I like networking could be so like, I don't know, cliche or outdated, especially with millennials compared to, um, you know, the older generation might not be as popular anymore just because of the digital space. But I can honestly say we've gotten where we've gotten by attending all the trade shows, talking with anyone and everyone, because you just don't know who you're going to be connected to. It's not just about setting up structured meetings, like just get out there and talk to people, pick up the phone, get on LinkedIn. It it really, you just, you might be talking to one person, but it leads you to another person that could be your answer. So uh, we still here haven't stopped networking. We're doing it every day. I love it. And that, yeah, that's one form of advice for sure. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. And I think um, people want to help each other. I don't know. The food, I don't know any other industry other than CPG, but from everything I've experienced in CPG, the people genuinely just want to help. Um, And that's really, really special. So use that. I agree. I agree. Cool. Well, Jasmine, anything else that you wanted to close off with? I don't think so. Thank you so much for having me. It was nice to chat and get away from being on the production floor. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you guys are doing some really big things there with your facility and how you're changing the food landscape. So thank you so much for everything that you are doing with the product for the grocery industry and for sharing your journey today. Thank you so much. That's it for this week, food friend. Thanks for tuning in. If the show helped you in any way, please go ahead and leave a rating or review of the show below. I also want to thank our sponsor one more time, the Food Brands That Sell program, the program to transform how you navigate the CPG industry and ultimately sets you up for success within it. Go ahead and get yourself on the wait list using the link below, or you can put yourself on the wait list at foodbrands.sell.com. Catch you next time, food friend.